Thanks a lot, madam. And uh, as madam has already told that I am her student, and uh, I am very grateful to be here. And at the outset, I would like to thank Pansi sir, Manoj, Bharat, and Sunil M J and sir to invite me to this very uh, important conference that is Diabetes India. And we all know that every year it is a mega successful event, and this year also it is again a big success. And we are here to debate the talk. Yeah, name here. Next. So thanks a lot to the respected chairpersons and moderators. So diabetes is increasing day by day and so is the diabetes in pregnancy. As Jigyasa has told that uh, day by day the pregnant females are coming and they are getting uh, being diagnosed with GDM. So my topic is metformin in pregnancy, why not to use? So Definitely, we can use metformin and in the coming few minutes of journey, we will be seeing that how metformin is an important drug for pregnant females also. So, metformin is a wonder drug having antimicrobial action, anti-aging, anti-cancer, useful in PCOS, hirsutism and n number of diseases and obesity. In contrast, the insulin is having cell proliferation <coughs> part and it can lead to uh, carcinogenic properties also. So multifaceted mechanism of action of metformin leads to decreased insulin resistance and decreased fatty liver and ultimately insulin sensitivity is improved. So why not metformin in pregnancy? So metformin was shown to be what were the concerns previously? It was shown to be able to significantly cross the placenta with fetal concentration range of half of maternal concentrations. But it does not stimulate the insulin secretion or release and does not cause hypoglycemia. It works through <coughs> insulin sensitizing pathway and decreasing the hepatic glucose output. So the concern that it passes the placenta is very uh, justifiable, but it does not cause harm to the fetus. So why metformin can be used? It is also useful to reduce the insulin resistance, which is the main culprit for increasing the hyperglycemia in GDM. And it constitutes an increasing popular treatment for polycystic ovarian disease patients who are willing to get pregnant. So, the teratogenicity part. Why we don't use the OHAs or any other drug to prevent the teratogenicity? So, the metformin, uh, several trials have shown no report or a, of any major congenital malformations in infants born to mothers who have received metformin throughout the pregnancy who are diabetics or non-diabetic even like PCOS or obese females. The practice what it says that several studies from South Africa for more than 20 years ago and New Zealand in 2006 have shown no adverse pregnancy outcomes when the patients were using metformin in diabetic pregnancy. The height, weight, motor social development in the first 18 months of life in 126 infant born were seen and followed up because follow-up studies are very less. So in this PCOS who are receiving metformin, even there was no difference was found in height, weight and motor social growth. In, way back in 1994 also, the congenital malformations in offsprings of diabetic women treated with oral hypoglycemic agents during embryogenesis have shown no major congenital malformations, no obvious indication for therapeutic abortions in patients receiving metformin during embryogenesis. The metformin in gestational diabetes and emerging contender, <coughs> our uh, very good researcher Abdesh Kumar Singh, this article of the, he has done the meta-analysis of several RCTs and he supported the outcome with metformin it, because of its ease of use, acceptability by the patient. As Madam was saying that compliance is a very big problem with insulin, significantly less maternal weight gain and less maternal hypoglycemia. Another study in BMJ open Treatment for gestational diabetes, a systemic review and meta-analysis. The 42 clinical trials in 8,000 patients, a meta-analysis was done and they have found it to be metformin to be most effective in reducing the risk of complication compared with the insulin or clibinclamide. Similarly, the glycemic control with metformin versus insulin when it was compared in GDM and they have found 21% of women were on insulin and 27% of women using metformin they achieved the adequate glycemic control in first week of treatment. So comparison of newborn outcomes in women, what we need? We need what is the newborn outcome when they are using insulin or metformin. Again, the birth weight, jaundice, hypoglycemia, all were less when the patients 
who are taking metformin and it is proven to be an excellent alternative to insulin and the patients are not <coughs> accepting the insulin treatment for GDM. The pregnancy outcome after first trimester exposure to metformin, again in this study by Gilbert et al, they have shown metformin treatment in first trimester was associated with a statistically significant 75% protective effect. On the basis of data in this analysis, there is no evidence of an increased risk for major malformations when metformin was taken in the first trimester. The first trimester exposure to metformin was not associated with an increased rate of major malformations. When meta-analysis was done, the hazard ratio was less than 1. So, metformin is also helping in getting pregnant because of the improvement in the insulin sensitivity in the PCOS or obese females. So, metformin is preventing the pregnancy losses in early stage and it is helping the patients to get pregnant. The very important trial that is the MIC trial in 2008, the metformin in GDM, like MIC trial have shown a prospective randomized multiple trial in 750 women in Australia and New Zealand and the trial started in 2002 and what it has shown in women with GDM metformin alone or with supplemental insulin is not associated with increased perinatal complications as compared to the insulin. The women who preferred metformin to insulin treatment have the positive benefits and the similar offspring outcomes were seen as per the insulin. The METI trial in 2020, a large 25 center trial in Canada and Australia, metformin has several maternal glycemic and neonatal adiposity benefits and the women who were receiving the metformin group, they achieved better glycemic control and required less insulin dose and the overall weight gain was less. The women in the metformin group had lower caesarean rates and the fewer women reported severe adverse events in the metformin group than in the placebo group. So, mo no difference between women who received metformin and those receiving placebo in a composite of neonatal mortality and morbidity was seen. Similarly, the women with GDM treated with metformin have <coughs> less weight gain and improved neonatal outcomes compared with these those treated with insulin in this study also. In the a case control study, the metformin treatment has favorable outcomes on the rates of macrosomy and small for gestational age despite more severe glucose intolerant at baseline. Metformin in this study, a systemic review and meta-analysis have shown potential benefit for pregnant women and newborns in terms of maternal and fetal outcomes. <coughs> Sorry. In the recent 2023 study also, the 24 studies in 4,000 participants, they have concluded that metformin is a safe oral antihyperglycemic drug and some benefits over insulin when used for the treatment of GDM without an increased short-term risk of neonatal adverse outcomes. What do the guidelines say? They again prefer the metformin is safe as first-line agent in pregnancy by International Federation of Gynecology. The American College of Obstetrician and Gynecology also recommends those who are unable to safely administer insulin can take metformin. The government also, the MOH management algorithm is also favoring <coughs> the use of metformin in the patients who are having the GDM. The first choice of drug can be insulin and metformin should be considered in the patients who are not willing to take insulin. The NICE guideline also says that the use of metformin as an adjunct or alternative to insulin in the preconception period and during pregnancy is safe. Canada Diabetes and FIGO 2017 ADA metformin is compared to insulin was associated with lower risk of neonatal hypoglycemia, less maternal weight gain and though it radially crosses the placenta but the harmful effects were not seen. So the choices are on the left side the metformin which has safe, no risk of hypoglycemia, compliant with patients of oral therapy, benefits are more and the insulin Patients may require multiple pricks, hypoglycemic fear, weight gain, fear of injections and uncontrolled low blood glucose levels. So metformin successfully overcomes all the drawbacks with injectable therapy by improving the compliance and decreasing the fear of injections. In GDM, long term effects on offspring, fetal effects all have shown the positive benefits. So my dear friends, the result of landmark trials, meta-analysis, they reveal the beneficial effect of metformin in pregnancy. And there is no increased risk of long-term outcome of perinatal outcomes. The several international guidelines recommend the use of metformin in pregnancy. 
metformin thus appears to be effective and safe oral drug to replace insulin in treatment of pregnancy so thank you thanks for patient hearing